good. We're not going outside. So you guys might be wondering why the whole hanger is emptied out and we pulled the 401 up to the front of the hanger. Well, when I looked at the 401 over at Forward Arrow, I noticed the engine bay was so oily and anywhere there was primer, the primer was coming off. So we left this whole engine bay in primer like a lot of people do, but that's just not gonna be good enough for the Phoenix. So we're gonna pull the engines off today. We're gonna get this all painted up in the same white that we have some of the other components painted in. That white paint, it's gonna keep this primer protected, which then is gonna keep the metal protected, and it's gonna look really good. So let's get at it. Hey, Joe. We need a welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, so what do we gotta do here? We gotta pull the four engine mounts off. We're gonna get these engines off. Blow it off real good, make sure we get all the dust off, see where all the oil's at, make sure we get all the oil up that we can get up. Might have to spray a little cleaner there to get the oil residue. Yeah. Maybe a little spot prime, and uh, I think it'll be just scuff it and paint it. So, and one of the things you guys don't know is when we put this engine on, there was a little bit of a problem with the heli coil in this engine mount. Now, you can do it in place, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So while that's off, we're gonna do that. Let's get these things off. I, I can't wait to get this thing painted. It's gonna look, it's gonna look so good. So we got this all clear. All the engine mounts are out of the way. Um, do we want to set, ah, that is what we need to do. I forgot about that. Do we want to put a tire on top of that or I think we're good? I think we're good. The only thing is that makes our engine stands unusable until we move them. But well. It'll be easy to pick them back up and do it again. Yeah. Uh, we also have to do the engine mount on here, but we can lift it up to redo that later. Is that gonna lay across these or do we need more? spacing. I think it would. We just got to watch that the oil pan doesn't hit and this doesn't hit. This is going to hit. This is lower. Come down slow and make sure we capture the engine mounts. You got it over here. You good? Grab a skid. I thought you wanted it the other way. Oh, I did. I was just seeing if you're paying attention. 
Save that splinter for later. Good? Oh, we're good. Nice. All right, so we got the engines off. Boy, this is a familiar sight, isn't it? Deja vu. Deja vu. All right, let's get these, uh, we'll bag these up. Sir, put these up here for now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Jerk. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna see a lot of this. Um, we're gonna have to clean all this up where there's loose loose primer. We're gonna wanna get those out of the way before we blow all this dust in Oh my gosh, yeah, into the engine. Yeah, let's roll these out of the way. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'll swing it last minute. Don't want to mess up that nice de-ding and paint job. So we get some compressed air in there. Yeah, some we'll hit it with some compressed air. It'll blow a lot of that flaking out. Yeah. Or and at then least make a flap at you so it. you see where it's at. Yeah. Then now uh, we clean those areas up a little bit. Yeah, we did do this once before, and interestingly, that lifted since then. But it, it's not going to be perfect. No matter what we do, it's not going to be perfect. The only way to make it perfect would be to totally strip everything out, totally like re-alodyne, re-acid etch it, re all that stuff. It is an engine mount area, but we can make it 95%. Well, there's probably 50 something years of oil in underneath, in between each one of those panels. Yeah, that for sure. It should have really been yeah. addressed. You're, you're not gonna get it perfect no, no matter what. I mean, it's a 60, 1969 airplane. The best thing that we can do is um, get it as good as possible this way. First thing we gotta do is get these wires all taped up, get them out of the way. But one of the problems that we're running into is they're completely oil soaked. So we're just gonna cover them up, get them out of the way for now. Once we get this all painted and we're unwrapping that, we have a pretty big job of getting all that oil soaked, getting these wires clean. Like we're not gonna have wires in here that are just, just so grungy and, and so dirty. So yeah, and then after we do that, we'll just clean some of this paint up, get some of this loose stuff off, use some thinner and some scotch bright pads and just prep it all and make sure it's good for paint. Don't forget, we're uh, getting rid of some of them too. Some of what? Those wires, oh, that's right, yeah. So a good portion of those wires are coming off of there. Yeah, so the only thing we're gonna keep is um, all of the, uh, yeah, like probably actually half those wires are gonna go. At least. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's a nice thing about going all digital. We're going to lose a lot of the, the, the oil pressure stuff. That's all going to be digital, so it'll be a totally different set of wires, and it's ran a completely different way. I actually can't wait to do that. It's like modern. It's the way it should be. We have that pretty much all taped up. What else we got to do, Joe? Yeah, now it's time to blow it off real good, and uh, then we start attacking and finding any bad spots that flaked up, and addressing that, and addressing yeah, oil. Get it cleaned up, right? And yeah. pressure, so much of the old primer flaked right off. Right away we could see that pulling the engines and refinishing the cradle assemblies was such a good call. We want the Phoenix to be right and we want it to last for years. For that to happen, every detail 
needs to be perfect. There was like a lot more of that paint that came off than I thought was going to, so I'm glad that we went through that. It's actually, yeah, it's actually all over me. So I want a brush and some thinner. So pretty much got all the loose primer off of there. Everything is all kind of like not sanded down, but scotch brighted down. It roughens it up really good. So you know whatever is loose is gone and whatever you want something to stick to something, you gotta have a little bit of a rough surface. So that's all done. So I'm just taking some prep, gonna wipe this down with some prep. After that, we're gonna get some primer back on here. Let it sit up and we get it painted. All right, so these things are all ready to go. They're all primered, they are set. So all we gotta do is get this thing to the paint shop. They'll get this thing shot. And then we can figure out what we're gonna do with the engines because we're not quite sure if they're going back on quite yet. Hey Dan, um, I got your message on the PA-28. Yeah, no, I took a close look at it here, you know, after uh, you guys dropped it off. Um, I'm not sure if you're, you know, fully aware of everything that's going on with it. Um, you know, surprisingly, there's really no firewall damage. Um, obviously, that belly skin you saw, that needs repaired, basically replaced. I don't know who took the airplane apart or what the situation was there, but it looks like when they removed some of the bolts from the spar box, they just weren't really paying attention, and some of the gusset plates uh, started to lift, and they actually bent them up pretty badly. Uh, and then, you know, I don't know what was going on, but it looks like they actually cut away some of the door posts to, to get access in there. Uh, to really repair it right, we'd have to repair that assembly or replace that assembly. We talked about a repair, um, but, you know, none of the guys here, we, you know, we bounced off of each other. We just, we just came to the conclusion okay. that replacing that whole assembly would be the thing to do. You know, that third uh, skin back, I think we can do a patch on that, which would be a lot cheaper. Uh, we can make it a flush patch um, and, you know, paint it and you won't okay. even be able to tell it was there. I think I'm probably just going to head down there and take a look at it. The thing with this i got to be so careful of is I, you know, we have a, we have a budget on it and uh, we mm. got to fix it. It's got to be 100% right, but I, I definitely don't want to put more in it than what I'll be able to sell it for. So, so yeah. I, I think I better get my eyes on it just to see exactly, um, you know, what it is and... Yep. Maybe we can look at options uh, when I come down. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a great plan. You know, seeing it in front of you is a, a lot better than me trying to explain it to you and shooting some numbers okay. at you and, and whatnot. So come on down. We'll take a look at it together, and uh, we'll just have to go from there. All right, man. All right, I'll, uh, I guess I'll, I'll come down tomorrow, if that's all right. Okay. Yeah, all right. No, I'll be around all day tomorrow, so whenever works for you. Sounds good, Dan. Thank you so much, man. Okay, sounds good. See you tomorrow. All right, talk to you soon.
All right, so Steve and I are off to Hagerstown, Maryland. We're going to Plain Care. We dropped off the fuselage a couple, probably like a week ago, I think now. And uh, they got a hold of me and said they found some issues. So we're going to fly over there. We're going to check it out. Hopefully it's not anything that um, is going to make it uh, unsavable. Might be, but hope not. So we're going to get up in the air. I'm going to actually get some air because it's finally warm out here. I'm not going to complain. I bought Sierra Bravo as a project from a salvage company with high hopes of fixing it and getting it flying again. We've already ran into a number of struggles and roadblocks. I'm so nervous to see the new damages the repair shop just found. If the cost to fix it is too much, we may have to scrap the whole project and part it out. Turning left now, M14, Winchester. All right, door shut and locked. Seat belt secure. Winchester traffic, Cherokee 9800 Whiskey, departing one right, one four at Winchester. Airspeed's coming alive, instruments are in the green. Got that crosswind, huh? Yeah, you can feel it. Yeah. It said only, what, five knots, four yeah, knots? It was more than that for sure. Yeah. Cherokee 9800 Whiskey will be departing the pattern to the north. The airport. Yeah, cool. Two seven speed. Yeah, not like that, right? Hagger Sound Tower, 9800 Whiskey's on the left downwind now. 9800 Whiskey, runway 27, clear to land. 27, clear to land. Zero Whiskey. All right, we have the runway, full flap. Actually, we're going over those buildings over there, so it'll be... Turkey 9800, we'll see destination on the airport. What's it called? Uh, plain Care. Plain Care. Turkey 9800, we'll see turn left at Papa Taxi and a Plain Care at this frequency. Left on Papa, stay with you. Zero, zero, whiskey. Where are we going? All the way down to those little buildings down there. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna get murdered in that building. Yeah, right. <laughs> After a quick flight, Steve and I arrived at plane care. The closer we got, the more nervous I became because if this damage is too heavy and we have to part it out, I'm gonna lose thousands of dollars. I think the air, airplane's over here. I think that's where Joe dropped it off at. Hey, how are you guys doing? Hey man, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Yeah, let's take a look at it. I'm a little worried about it, to be honest. You say you're a little worried about it? I'm a little worried about it. Okay, alright, well, you know, seeing it in person, you know, I can walk you through it. Yeah, you look at this. Steve, I think we got a little problem with the spar. I think the spar is a little damaged here. Ouch. And I don't think these are, um, STC for no. this airframe. We were thinking about doing a tailwheel conversion. The tailwheel conversion. It's already set up. We just got to put a little tailwheel in the back. So what? Are, what's that off of? I'm gonna copy. A this. wrecked airplane. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know we've got you know we find donor wings for airplanes that've been wrecked and we just cut the spar sections out where the gear attaches. And yeah. We just plug it in there, shorten it up, obviously. Yeah, uh, that's pretty cool. So if you see this piece here, okay. This um this bracket that's kind of bent up. That was the one that when we were looking at it, I, I like looked at it and I wondered, was it just like a small webbing piece? But after so the pictures that you sent me, like it's- It's not, the, the bracket itself isn't very big. Okay. Uh, but to get it out, what we would do is we would unzip 
these rivets here so we can flex these okay. skins enough without okay. creasing them to physically get that bracket out. I have a feeling when one of these bolts was removed, the bolt stuck in the bracket and, just and it was driven out. out. They yep. didn't know that it was pulling up on exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> um, so, and it just ripped everything. Right. The framework around it is also damaged. It looked like somebody tried to make a repair at some point here. Okay. This piece here is really what should be replaced as well with this one. You can see they cut out the okay. other side, but that bracket or that gusset place is, plate it's is actually good. damaged. So right. it's just this portion yep. here. And that piece is much smaller. Okay. So, you know, much less work to replace just that web there than this one that runs the whole length of the door post okay. there. Uh, and obviously this other skin that's yours here goes up front. Yep. Um, these hat sections we'll put back in. Yeah, so this is the Flintstone model. What you do <laughs> is if you can get fast enough on the runway here, right? It's just running right here. You can take off. So originally we planned on, I think I had figured around like six grand when we were thinking of, you know, that patch down here in the bottom and like that front end. So where are we going to be at? I think <laughs> so, I gave you an estimate for around 10. Is okay. That right? Um, so I, and that was for everything. The, okay, so you know, that's everything. Skin there, paint. Okay. Um, you know, replacing this and replacing this door post in here. Okay. Um, and know, then really, that's that whole post here. Yeah. Now with that, we would still be putting a patch on this skin. And right. And I think that's fine. I think yep. a patch there is fine. Yeah, you're never going to see it. it you know, no. obviously it would be. And well I mean, it's as big as on. an antenna patch. Yep. For sure. Yep. Exactly. So. Okay. Exactly. And we'll zip that panel all back together where it's been taken apart and. Okay. It'll be as good as new. It really will. Awesome. One of the main goals, you know, that we have is saving airplanes. And unfortunately, what happens is when you get into one, you don't know how it's pulled apart. You really don't know what all is going to be there. Really quickly, it can add up. And this one is really getting at that cusp of if, of actually costing us money, you yeah. know, for what we can sell it for. You know, we want to get all the repairs done, like, perfectly, you know. And uh, unfortunately, you know, I did buy it so I didn't see, but I also missed those. Right. Uh, so, I get it. well, good. Let's um, let's just get it done. Okay. Let's All get right. it Sounds done. Good. Yeah. No. I mean, it'll be every bit as good as it was new when we're done. I mean, we're basically replacing everything that was damaged. Okay. Uh, so that should be that should be a good setup. For do you. I do I get to keep my new landing gear? No, we need those. Unfortunately, no, you don't want to go get airplanes that've been wrecked. <laughs> right. you know, we pull the wings off and we put it on these to get it up on the trailer. Uh, so we need these. But I can. Um, Keep you an you eye have out any more it. like ruin? I might be able to come up with some more ruin spar ends for if you. If you do, seriously, let yeah, me know yeah, because yeah. this would do any of the PA 28s or 32s, yep, right? Exactly. Or arrow exactly. or anything. Uh, yep, yep. That is brilliant. Awesome. Awesome. Sounds good. Let's get it done. All right. Thanks so much. Cool. We stopped by Plane Care. Dan showed us around. He showed us all the issues with the 235. So we have some decisions that we got to make. But we'll get to that later. I don't want to think about that now. Let's get to flying. Take it down. Sounds good. Ground. This is one. There's a bonanza with weeds underneath it. Ah. <laughs> we are not landing again. <laughs> but it's a bonanza. All right, I'm in. <laughs> so it's another day here in the rescue hangar. And if you can't tell, there's a couple things that are a little different around here in the shop. Oh, and I got the surgery done on my arm. So I'm gonna be a little bit slow, but the doctor told me if you don't get this fixed now, you're gonna have issues with it. It's gonna be weaker for the rest of your life. I, I didn't wanna get it done, um, but we went ahead and I got the surgery. So I'm gonna be one armed for a little bit. That means we're gonna be a little bit slow. Well, I'm gonna be a little bit slow, um, but we're probably gonna get some more help in here. But for now, uh, well, actually, yeah, the other day I came in uh, after my surgery we got this engine ready to go. So we're gonna get it back on the 401 and we got it back from the paint shop and it's got all nice brand new white paint on the engine cradle. And I know it's hard to see in the video, but this looks absolutely better than brand new because if, as you guys know, 
they don't come this way. You don't get them this way. They come aluminum and then they have no protection and they corrode. This has alodyne, it's got zinc chromate. Now it's got some nice white paint. If we get oil on this thing, it's gonna wipe right up and this is gonna be protected for years and years to come. So it looks really good. Really, really good. They did a great job. Now we just gotta get these engines on. This is gonna look good. I can't wait to set this down on there. Ready? Ready. I was born ready. <laughs> that, that didn't sound too... <laughs> that, that, wasn't convincing, <laughs> that wasn't convincing. So I do have this set up that when we hoist it up, the engine's gonna spin. I think. If all goes to plan, hopefully it spins all the way around. It's spinning. <laughs> it's spinning. Perfect. Sometimes it actually works out. <laughs> Don't you love it when a plan comes together? All right. Well, I wish we had the pneum pneumatic cylinders for this. Oh my gosh. That should be good. We got plenty, plenty of height, I think. All right, let's go in. All right, stop. All right, let's get down real slow, like. You could probably get uh, the front mounts on with it the way it is. I'm gonna hold this here. You wanna grab one? I'm lined up perfectly over here. Sorry. Smack down the forehead. <laughs> I got his arm. That should be good. I'm just gonna get it right there. That slid right in. That was perfect. I forgot how much of a bear these were to get on. Mm -hmm. Well, we try this one. I got this one lined up. Is it lined up? This is the one I just redid, so shake it around a little bit. Hopefully my uh, doctor's not watching any of these episodes. <laughs> I may get in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Trying to get this thing to set, settle down. Just like that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's in. That was it. That was it. And it's smooth, it's it's good. Everything is tightening down right. The down. Can you? Yeah. Whew. All right, one down, one to go. Yeah. Oh shoot, I gotta put the things on. Now we didn't... <clears throat> Maybe. How are we looking over there, Corey? This front's lining up pretty nice. I, like, I bet if you drop it down another inch, it'd be pretty close. Okay. I think it's gonna have to go down. We're gonna have to muscle it. You know what I mean? I was thinking if we could take this and wrap it around here and just pull up a tiny bit. It's just tilted. Just to pull up a bit on this, it should set it back in. Back in. Yep. Oop. Yep, that's it. We're down. And it's looking pretty good. Yeah. Wait a second, I might be able to thread this thing right on. So 
winner. Oh my god. I think so. And just to let you guys know, I took no pain medicine today. Can't work on this stuff if you don't take if you take pain medicine. Oh yeah, that's true. So I am pain medicine less. I can tell by your grimace earlier trying to use your other arm. <clears throat> oh my gosh, it hurts so bad. <laughs> Yeah, that one went straight on. I think that front strap is keeping it so much more level. <laughs> you know how happy this makes me. We got better at doing these anyway. How long did it take us last time we put these on? It took us... I don't know, I don't even talk oh, about I think it. it took us like half a day. And a helicoil later. And a helicoil later. You don't want to cross thread them. You'll mess that helicoil up so quick. Since this is the last time they're coming off, let's look up the torque values. Let's get the torque wrench. Get it torqued. And these are installed. Up. Do we want to torque seal them? Do you want to torque seal them, Joe? And then we can bend the tabs? Yeah. I think it's time for the tabs to come over. Or tab them and then seal them. I just noticed something. What's that? Take a look at this with me. Joe just brought to my attention, he was looking over the manual here, and one of the notes is the fact that you could end up needing some shims in between those mounts if the cowling doesn't match up correctly. So, so basically, we could mount that whole cowling up Actually, we could get everything perfectly torqued, everything torque sealed, all the tabs bent over and everything, and then have to go back and put shims in between those mounts if the spinner doesn't clear or if, or if something else doesn't clear for the cowling. And that's the way that you adjust them. So I, th I think what we should do then is not bend the tabs over. We should, they are torqued, so let's take some notes and we'll put notes on all the engine, you know, at least yeah. both sides that they're torqued, but needs clearance for cowling. Yeah. And then if it all fits up when we fit the cowling up, it's good to go. And then we can torque seal them and bend the tabs. Yeah. Yeah, because if we bend the tabs now, then have to change it later, then, then you're we change might the tabs, have to. You're yeah. gonna pull the bolts out. We don't yeah. want to do that again. So it's it's good you found that, man. It's good to have a manual. Yeah, it's good a to good have a, manual. It's good to have a whole manual. So that's one step closer to getting the 401 Phoenix back up in the air flying again. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't done it yet, please hit the subscribe button. Hit the like. Thank you so much for being here. Take care.